Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie and today we are watching Oppenheimer. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and welcome if you're new. Today, we are diving on into Oppenheimer. Finally, this movie has been out for a very long time now, although it just recently became available to watch digitally at home. I've basically just been twiddling my thumbs ever since this movie was released, just waiting to check it out. I've heard good things about it, although I've heard it's long. I've heard it's a lot to get through. It's definitely one of the longer movies I, I, I think I've watched here on my channel or I'm going to watch here on my channel at around three hours for a runtime. So I'm gonna be settling in with this one. Something I did not know about this movie until sitting down to watch it today was just how stacked the cast is. I obviously knew that Killian Murphy is in this film playing Oppenheimer, and I'm really excited to see his work in particular because I really don't feel like I've seen a lot of Killian's work. Checking out his IMDb just now, I noticed that he is in A Quiet Place 2, which is a film that I have been wanting to check out ever since I saw the first film. He was also in Dunkirk, which is a movie that I did see, uh, but a lot of his filmography I'm not very familiar with. I, of course, have heard of him and I know of him, but I just don't think I've seen a ton of his work. So I am really excited to see what he does in this film. The rest of the cast I'm very familiar with, people like Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh. I love all of these actors. I think they're all brilliant. Florence Pugh in particular is one of my favorite actresses of all time. I also love Emily Blunt so much. I just think she's phenomenal. I haven't seen Robert Downey Jr. in something in a really long time. Um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is another movie that I really hope to check out this holiday season. It basically depends on what uh, wins the poll <laughs> over on my Patreon page. Make sure to go check out my Patreon if you want to have say in the movies that we watch over here as well as full access to watch along style reactions. But honestly, like I've really just mostly seen Robert Downey Jr. in like Marvel or Tropic Thunder. So, <laughs> and I know he's like a mega star. I know he's done dramas. I know he's done stuff well before Marvel, well before Tropic Thunder. Um, so I am excited to see him in something that's more grounded and dramatic. Um, and just see what his role is like in this film. It does seem like a very stacked cast, and I'm just very excited for that. It's also another Christopher Nolan film. We've checked out a few of those here on my channel. We've seen things like Interstellar. We've seen Inception. We've seen the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, all movies that definitely tend to play around with time a lot as a theme and as a thing that's explored in the editing and in the set design, in the way that the movie progresses. Time is always very important in his movies. He definitely loves playing around with that. So with a movie like Oppenheimer, I am expecting a lot of stakes and tension built into the concept of time. I mean, with what Oppenheimer is known for in the creation of the atomic bomb, obviously, you know, bombs usually have a countdown to when they're dropped or when they're set off. So I am expecting a lot of countdowns and timers and just time elements built into this film. There's also the whole time element of in World War II, how countries were racing to beat each other in terms of making atomic weapons first. So there's a lot to explore. And I do think Christopher Nolan was probably the right director for a story like this. And I am really interested to see what he does with it. Albeit this film seems very long. Um, I, I will be curious to see if I feel like the time needed to stay that way or if the film could have been cut down at all. I, I'll definitely be interested to see how I feel at the end of this experience because it, it's a long one. Although I do feel like Christopher Nolan's films tend to feel a bit beefier and heavier, and a lot of that time is warranted. Uh, something like Interstellar was a very long movie, but it didn't necessarily feel like it was too long. It really did feel like it needed everything that happened in the film um, had to happen in the way that it happened. And I liked the way that the pacing started off really slow and picked up really naturally throughout the course of the film. Um, and I had time to settle into it. So yeah, with a film this length, I'm expecting to hopefully get a lot of backstory on a figure like Oppenheimer. I mean, I, I don't really know much about him as a historical figure, but mostly I'm just excited to learn things today um, when diving into a movie or show that's centered around historical events. I always hope that they're really historically accurate so that I can feel like I'm also learning 
while being entertained. But that's all I really have for this intro, and I think without any further ado, we should just get on into it. So if you all are ready, grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into the movie. Oh wow, the imagery in this is gonna be really cool. This is this is amazing. Prometheus stole the fire from the gods and gave it to man. For this, he was changed to a rock and tortured for eternity. Dr. Oppenheimer. Is it just me or did, did he look younger in the still before this? Was that him before and this is after? I went to Cambridge to study under Patrick Blackett. Were you happier there than in America? Happier? Yes. Oh, is that when he was younger? Oh. I need to go to the lecture, sir. Why? It's Mills Bohr. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh. Oh, no, not you, Oppenheimer. <laughs> you finish coaching us, please. What? What, now a teacher's bullying him? That's ridiculous. He's the one that reminded you. Teacher's pet. Nah. Sorry. <laughs> No. Is he poisoning the teacher? I don't actually know what potassium cyanide does, but cyanide doesn't sound good. Is he poisoning the teacher? Did he run into the room to see if the apple was still there? Or what is he? Oh, it's still there. Niels, meet J. Robert Oppenheimer. Oh, Niels. I heard you give the same question. Harvard, yes, and you ask the same question. Why ask again? Oh no, his idol's gonna eat it. Are you kidding me? Get to Germany, study under mm -hmm. Max Born, learn the ways of theory. That's great. Uh, I'll send word. Wormhole. Did that actually happen? Did he actually almost poison a teacher? Damn, this campus is beautiful. Oh my God, how did they create all the artwork and illustrations for this? It's stunning. I'm wondering if all this imagery is gonna come back around to mean something. Cause right now it's just pretty. Admiral Strauss, I'm interested in your relationship with Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer. You met him in 1947? Correct. It's weird, because only this is in black and white. I'm told he's there most after. Oh, who's that? You know, I've always wondered why you didn't involve him in the Manhattan Project. Greatest scientific mind of our time. Of his time. Who's that? Einstein published his theory of... Oh, Einstein. Wow. Oh, my God. The iconic hair. It's crazy. Albert. What was that? What happened, yeah. What did you say to him? Oh, he's fine. Is he? I don't think he is. I think you wrecked him. You are the man for the job. Well, then I'll consider it. This is one of the most prestigious appointments in the country. Yes, it was a great commute. He was, yeah, I could tell he was butthurt by that. Ah, a great commute. If you'll just allow me to continue with my Mr. statement. Rob. Oh, I just noticed Emily Blunt's in the background, listening to the statement. Does she play his wife? I'm an American myself. Let me know if you need any help with the English. Hey, the bulls sing to us in an alpha del chain in at home. Fange for and for shielding energy in the verbinding is up an arm in the relative translation. What's he saying? <laughs> That's actually so funny. He's like, wait, uh, uh, okay, can you help me now? <laughs> I caught your lecture on molecules. Caught some of it. Mm -hmm. We're a couple of New York Jews. How do you know Dutch? Wow, I didn't know Oppenheimer was one of the tribe. I could have guessed by the name, but. Dutch in six weeks, but you never learn Yiddish. You don't speak it so much my side of the park. Screw you. They speak it all over New York, dude. Ever get the feeling our kind isn't entirely welcome here? Physicists. It's funny. Physicists. Eat. This man really is Jewish. <laughs> oh, oh, I must have missed the... Lo Mr. Lomlitz? No. Yeah. Yes, this is it. Please. Please see. He's the only student. What do you know about quantum mechanics? It's a one-on-one -on -one class. I love how it doesn't get him down. He's just like, teach him with one student and I'm gonna convince him and it's gonna be great. Oh, yep, the class is growing. There we go. Mr. Lowlands, you're gonna be okay. Mr. Snyder. Why did he say it like that? <laughs> that, that would make me think I wasn't gonna be okay. Or do you use the discipline to channel your energies into progress? I like a little wiggle room. Do you always tell the party line? I like my wiggle room too. Okay, so this maybe is gonna be his wife. <laughs> What's this? Sanskrit. Hmm. Wow, how many languages did he learn? Read this. What the heck? This turner on? And now I am become death. 
What the heck? She crazy. What the? Now I am become death destroyer of worlds. That's pretty ominous. Oh, Harlan, our paper, it's in print. You've been upstaged. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. mm-hmm. During the Battle of Britain, I found myself increasingly out of sympathy with the policy of neutrality that communists advocated. But after Hitler invaded Russia and we became allies, these communist sympathies, do they return? No. That's all people want to focus on. On Russia did not mean a sharp break like, from those who held different views. Yeah, like your political opinions can never change. For a year or two during a previous marriage, my wife Kitty had been a Communist Party member. Oh no, okay, I see. The, oh, Emily Blunt did become his wife then, okay. This was Kitty. You're a biologist. Well, somehow I have graduated to housewife. Can you explain quantum mechanics to me? Wait, is she married to somebody else? And we're flirting? You're married to Dr. Harrison. Not very. Not very. I'm going to New Mexico. To my ranch with friends. You should come. You should leave your husband behind. And... I meant with your husband. Oh, with your husband. Oh, okay. Because you know it won't make a bit of difference. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow, we're just being bold in our affair. Well, my previous husband had died and at 28. I wasn't really ready to be a widow. It was your first husband. Nobody. My second husband was Joe Dallet. Uh -huh. So this doctor is her third husband? Now here I am, wherever the hell this is. Oh yeah, okay, now we, now, okay. <laughs> Nobody tell Dr. Harrison or whatever his name is. At least you didn't bring me flowers. Yeah, girl, you were too hot and cold. Sorry, oh, he did bring flowers. Oh my God, to be like, sorry, I cheated on you. <laughs> I fell in love with somebody else. It's a trade union filled with communists. So I haven't joined the party. They won't let me bring you onto the project because of this. Do I really care what I do? Because you're not just self-important. You're actually important. I like that line. You're not just self-important. You're actually important. It's crazy how people focus so much on the communist thing, man. Like you're not allowed to question anything. You're not allowed to have your political views dip in the wrong direction. Even just if it's just a temporary amount of time, just. We're putting together a group to study We feasibility. shouldn't be doing anything. You should. Lawrence won't get this done. Or Tom or Robbie, you will. There's a lot of ego stroking in this, in this story. Some scientists think a lot of themselves, huh? I'm Colonel Groves. This is Lieutenant Colonel Nichols. I have that dry clean. Well, if that's how you treat Lieutenant Colonel, I'd hate to see how you treat a, a humble physicist. Uh, if I ever meet one, I'll let you know. <laughs> That's what I was saying. That's what I've been saying, actually. Everyone's so full of themselves. Heisenberg, Diebner, both are bored. What do these men have in common? Uh, the greatest minds on atomic theory. Yes, and? Huey! Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, this cast! It's about unleashing the strong force before the Nazis do. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't know Josh was in this movie. What the f***? He's returning to drama? Oh, wow, that lens. Wow. <laughs> the dust coming through the light. This looks stunning and so soft. Oh, this one too. Whoa. Albert. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Interesting. So we're going to see a little bit of their backstory and maybe why Einstein was so troubled to see him later. Whose work is this? Tellers. What do you take it to mean? Neutrons smash into nucleus, releasing neutrons to smash into other nuclei. Point of no return, massive explosive force. But this time, the chain reaction doesn't stop. Doesn't stop, and the whole world implodes, or? Ignite the atmosphere. The atmosphere, uh. When we detonate an atomic device, we might start a chain reaction that destroys the world. Mm-hmm. Tell us all. <sighs> it's, it's a valid concern to consider, though. The chances of an uncontrolled nuclear reaction are near zero. Near zero. Until they actually detonate one of these things, the best assurance you're going to get is this. Near zero. <sighs> <laughs> One looks so optimistic and the other looks so terrified still. No presidential cabinet nominee has failed to be confirmed since 1925. This is just how the game is played. It's That's in right. the bag, Lewis. So play nice. I don't know if it is in the they bag. They're bringing a scientist, so what? Are they bringing Albert? Find out if he was based in Chicago or Los Alamos during the war. Why does that matter? Well, if he was based in Chicago, they worked under Sillard and Fermi, not the cult of Abbey at Los Alamos. Uh huh. Robert built that damn place. He was founder, mayor, sheriff, all rolled into one. We got 
a really interesting B plot going on here with this whole Strauss story. Look, I've had a lot of secrets in my head for a long time. He went to see Jean. What an idiot. What an idiot. And he brought her flowers too. What an idiot. He left. <laughs> They're just sitting naked in chairs. It's kind of funny. What did you have to see her? She had indicated a great desire to see me before we left. Why did you had to see her? Well, this little thing in my pants told me I had to. She was undergoing psychiatric treatment. She was extremely unhappy. Did you find out why she had to see you? Oh, now he's naked giving the deposition. He feels naked. That's crazy. She was still in love with me. With his wife in the room. My God. Oh, and she's seeing that. Oh my God. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a crazy scene. That is a crazy scene. Wow. I can't see you again. But what if I need you? You said you would always answer. Oh, sh he did. F That's not a promise you can make. Damn. Did you think that consistent with good security? As a matter of fact, it was. Not a word. What's that thudding about? I never saw her again. Did she kill herself? What was that? What was that image in the tub and the hair? I'm sorry, Oppie, but there's a call from San Francisco. San Francisco? What happened? Did somebody die? Did his brother die or? Robert? What happened? Why is he out here? What's he doing out here? Your father called. Oh, Jean killed herself. No, it was me, it was me. You don't get to commit the sin. And then I was all feel sorry for you that it had consequences. Pull yourself together. Oh, sh Ain't no rest for the wicked, huh? It's your job, Teller. I'm engaged in research. On a hydrogen bomb, we're not even building. It's important, actually. <laughs> I won't work for that man. Oh. No one is leaving Los Alamos. He's gonna go stop Teller. He's gonna stop him just before the gates. They won't let me leave. No? Uh. I won't let you leave. Forget vision. Stay here. Research what you want. He's talking so quietly with how far away they're standing apart. <laughs> only intended target would be the largest cities. It's a weapon of mass genocide. Izzy, draw some circles on this side of the map. Wait, now we're in a scene with Robert Downey Jr. that's in color because it's from Oppenheimer's perspective? I'm so confused. We can already drown Russia. They know the they they drown. I gotta know what this noise is that he's, oh, it's feet that he keeps hearing. We have a list of 12 cities to choose from. I'm sorry, 11. <sighs> I've taken Kyoto is... off the list due to its cultural significance to the Japanese people. Wow, so nice of you. My wife and I honeymooned there. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a magnificent city. They're all magnificent. It... Is there anything else that might stop us? Weather. Mother Nature doesn't cooperate. Oh, are they getting evacuated because of the weather? It's happening, isn't it? I'll send a message. It's gone our way. Taking the sheets. Oh no, he's he's getting on the car with them, I see. Break a leg. Break a leg? Interesting. I mean, that's like a show business term. That's an interesting choice of words. Oh god, it's really windy. Sandstorm level winds. Wonderful. It's exactly what you don't want. Hope he's taking a very modest three kilotons. Tell us in with 45. Morning. Are they betting? And does anyone want the side action on atmospheric ignition? Oh God, uh, that's not, it's not a funny joke. You know, the chain reaction is also like, makes me think of the ripple effect because we've been seeing a lot of ripple imagery and water imagery in this movie as well. <sighs> Just interesting. What did Fermi mean by uh, atmospheric ignition? You don't want to know, bro. You don't want to know. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Oh, now all of a sudden he's terrified. How remote? Chances are near zero. Now he's panicking the way that Oppenheimer panicked years ago. I would not want to be close to this area when this test was happening. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It's a countdown of 20 minutes. Do they all need to... Oh my God. Okay, so they're... What's with all the mattresses on the ground? Is it for them to sit on? Fine. No. What's he putting on? Is he putting sunscreen on? Smart of him, I guess. Get your bases covered. Try not to blow up the world. Well, thanks. It's a little late for that, General. Do not turn around until you see light reflected on the hills. Then look at the explosion only through your welder's glass. Oh, that's, oh, they're facing that way for safety, I see. 
Is it rubbed in? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, bro. It is not rubbed in at all. You also missed a big spot on your forehead. Man, I can't imagine how terrifying this experience must have been, like not knowing if you'll actually be okay or not, and thinking that just facing away would protect you. Put the goggles on, bro. Silence. Dude, I couldn't handle facing away from that, man. Oh, he's just like looking up at it out of the car. Wow, I like that they chose to have it be completely silent and just his breathing because we all know how loud a bomb actually is. So just to have it feel silent feels like deafening, you know? And now I am become death. Mm. The destroyer of worlds. The shockwave. Oh, sh the silence and then the shockwave coming through later. Holy f Oh, it hit them. Yeah, f I was gonna say, it'd be even worse out there. <laughs> it's gotta be such a strange feeling to want to celebrate this accomplishment of like something you've worked so hard towards. Like it works and it was all theory. Like that's gotta be such an accomplishing feeling, but at the same time, like horrified at what that means for the world. Yeah, and he's not happy. Because from the whole beginning of this experience, he felt like it wasn't right to work on this, but he knew he really had no choice. Get a message to Kitty. We can't say anything. Tell her to take in the sheets. Oh, I can't say anything. Just tell her to take in the sheets. She knows what that means. Well, you'll keep me informed. Uh, probably not. Of course. As best I can. Yeah, they don't need you anymore. This thing that you've created, this weapon of mass destruction, this baby of yours is now completely out of your hands. An American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima. It has an atomic bomb. All the soldiers are cheering, but meanwhile, all of the scientists are like terrified. We have spent more than $2 billion on the greatest scientific gamble in history. Uh, I like the choice to have, oh, these are the feet of the people in the audience that he was hearing, cheering for him in a time when he is probably feeling quite distressed about everything, you know? I love the choice to have tragic violin music over the top of all of that celebration too, because it just means like so many innocent lives were lost, so many casualties. Oh uh, yeah, that's the sound. Oh God. What is he going to say? The world will remember this day. Oh, whoa. It's like his whole world is pulsating and vibrating and splitting apart now on his side. Whoa. It's too soon to determine what the results of the bombing are, but I'll bet the Japanese didn't like it. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, he's hearing screaming now, instead of the applause. I just wish we had it in time to use against the Germans. Wow, oh my God, the sound design for this. So eerie. Oh, and now he's seeing the flash of the bomb. Holy f oh my God, wow. And what would have happened to them if it had been used on them, yeah. It's like a horror movie. Is that a charred? What was that that he was, uh, thought he was stepping through? Oh, and now oh, the laughter turns to tears. People canoodling and kissing and then seeing them crying and traumatized. It's crazy, man. I like this a lot. This choice to show the guilt that he feels. Is that in his imagination too? Or is that, because I know that's a scientist he worked with. Did that guy actually throw up as well? Or was he just seeing that? By the time I met him, he fully embraced his father's bomb reputation and used his profile to influence policy. Yeah, you got to start being like hardcore. Oh, now we're in black and white again because it's from Strauss's perspective. When Eisenhower took office, he saw one more chance. He took it. 
it's interesting to have like Strauss's perspective as a B-plot, but he can also be utilized as a narrator and it works. He was a war hero. He'd already told everyone about his past. Borden dredged it all up. How could Borden get access to Oppenheimer's FBI file? Could it have been Nichols? This guy represents the audience because we're all just like, what? Tell me, I don't understand. We need a systematic destruction of Oppenheimer's credibility so he can never again speak on matters of national security. Damn. Then what? Shabby little room. Far from the limelight. Oh, little deposition here. I appoint a board. They will, of course, have counsel. Prosecutor? In all but name. It's all f fake. No audience, no reporters, no burden of proof. Wow, that's so dirty. Teller's testifying this morning. That'll help. And then Hill is in the afternoon. Hill is going to help us too. That guy looks disgusted. He's like, I can't believe I've worked for this asshole. Wow, this is so gross. The following conclusions are justified. One, between 1929 and 1942, more probably than not, J. Robert Oppenheimer was a sufficiently hardened communist that he volunteered information to the Soviets. Wow, this is what they're saying. But he has since been functioning as an espionage agent. Wow, this is the bullshit they're saying. Are you kidding me? Is anyone policy. ever going to tell the truth about what's happening here? We will now hear from Dr. David Hill. It's a commentary on the movie. Oh, or Hill. Will he say the truth? This is Remy Malik's character, isn't it? It is. I've been asked to testify about Louis Strauss, but I believe that much I have to say will help to indicate why most of the scientists in this country would prefer to see Mr. Strauss completely out of government. <laughs> Ha 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 Oh my God, guys, I was about to say he just dropped a bomb, but that's not okay for this movie. Of the personal vindictiveness he demonstrated against Dr. Oppenheimer. Wow. Yeah, he the real villain. And his actions frankly appear to me confused and complicated. To this extent, I feel I want to see the vital interests of this country in hands which I understand better. Sorry. You shook his f***ing hand? spit in his face well kitty honestly i think what he did what showed more maturity i think you're all being too goddamn gentlemanly i think you need to put down the bottle babe but i like that she wants to fight she's got a fire in her you need to stop playing the martyr she's begging him to fight and he's taking the high road but i i do think him shaking his hand in that moment was a good thing did you have a communist party membership card i'm not sure not sure well well God, I want her to like fight back and like really get them, but I don't know how. I mean, these guys are just so slimy. It's just, it was also very long ago, Mr. Rob, wasn't it? Not really. Long enough to have forgotten. Did you return the card or rip it up? The card whose existence I've forgotten. Your Communist Party membership card. I haven't the slightest idea. Damn, here she goes. I believe the whole thing's linked together and spread all over the world. And I have believed this since I left the party 16 years ago. But 17 years ago, my mistake. Mm. You Sorry, 18. <laughs> Hell yeah, girl. I know he took an intellectual interest in communist ideas. The two types of communists. Intellectual communists and your plain old regular commie. <laughs> well, I couldn't answer that one. <laughs> I couldn't either. He likes her, yeah. She's winning him over, my God. She gives me vibes of the type of woman who like drinks because her mind is so painful to live in because she's so smart and emotionally intense that she like drinks to dull her senses and like almost like take the edge off of her boredom from being a housewife, you know? Like she gives me those kinds of vibes. I don't know what Oppenheimer said during that day, but by this time, even meet my eye. He hates Oppenheimer, man. He'd do it all over, why? because it made him the most important man who ever lived. You're just jealous. You're just jealous. He wanted the glorious, insincere guilt of the self-important to wear like a crown and say, no, we cannot. This guy's so over his bullshit. Would you have been opposed to the dropping of a thermonuclear weapon on Japan because of Mao's no. sense? No. if I would, sir. Or did you oppose the dropping of an atomic bomb on Hiroshima? It was water dripping. Oh no, it's the vibration. I knew that was gonna come back around. I would have done anything I was asked to do. Well, then you would have killed the H-bomb too, wouldn't you? My God. And the water ripples. Oh, the flash of the water. Yeah, I forgot. The water being used. Just as it had with the atomic bomb. Just as it had with the atomic bomb, exactly. I forgot about the theme with the water also plaguing him with Gene's death as well. 
We have voted two to one to deny the renewal of your security clearance. Wow. Like, of course you have. Pathetic. Yeah, let's all shake hands about the shady work that we did here. You guys feel good? I feel good. Don't do. Is he going to say the sheets thing again? Don't do Don't it. Don't take in the sheets. Don't take in the sheets, yeah. I knew that would come back around. Is it official? Oh, God. Well, there were uh, a couple of unexpected holdouts. I bet it's not the news he wanted. He didn't get on the cabinet, I bet. Undenied. Yeah. I'm afraid so, sir. All right. He turned the scientists against me one by one, starting with Einstein. I told you about that, uh, Einstein. Bro, you sound like a crazy man at this point. Since nobody really knows what they said to each other that day, is it possible they didn't talk about you at all? Right, right. He's so narcissistic. He can't even comprehend that idea. Man, this movie really is just filled with a bunch of men and their egos. Oh, what did they talk about? Oh, wow, I'm glad we get to see it. I didn't think we'd get to see it. And one day, when they've punished you enough, they'll serve you salmon and potato salad. <laughs> oh, wow. Cutting to him being much older. Just remember. Tell her. It won't be for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, she still hasn't forgotten. She won't shake his hand. She never forgets. Help him. Oh, yeah, what did he say? When I came to you with those calculations, we thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world. I remember it well. What of it? I believe we did. Yeah. Yeah, just a different kind of chain reaction. And that chain reaction was the arms race of atomic weapons. That's what he was scowling about. Yeah, it had nothing to do with Strauss at all. He was just so self-absorbed, he couldn't see outside of himself. All right, I'm gonna go take a break before I film this outro. So I took some time to think about the movie for a bit. It's a little tough because I do wish that this is a movie that I could unpack with somebody like Tyler before sitting down and filming an outro. I do have mixed feelings on this film. I think all in all, it was well made. I think from a biopic perspective, that it was fair and nuanced in um, telling an intimate portrait of a man who was kind of confusing and had a lot of mixed feelings on his historical impact. I think it was very empathetic and I really liked what themes were explored with things like water and ripple effects and chaining. I also really liked the sound design element and the sound and lack of sound that we used to portray this oppressive guilt that he was feeling. I think the effects in general were just fantastic and um, I did hear that it was all practical, which is amazing. I love hearing stuff like that because I, I just think you can't capture the kind of texture that we saw in this film from CGI alone. I mean, you need practical effects. They have so much use in film. And this movie was just stunning. I mean, the imagery was just absolutely beautiful, so textured. The sound design as well. Um, I, I really liked that that sound of stomping feet was revealed to be this fervorous applause and appreciation for him, but that it actually served as this sense memory for like panic and guilt and moral qualms. It didn't serve as this happy memory for him. It served as this awful, horrific memory that kind of sent him into almost PTSD-like flashbacks where he was seeing flashes of the bomb and people being harmed in front of him, seeing things that weren't really there. Um, I liked that that sound design had that kind of impact. I also really enjoyed a lot of the performances from the actors. I think Killian Murphy did a fantastic job. I think he did a, a really wonderful job of not doing too much, not overperforming, um, and really allowing us as the audience to kind of search his face to see how he was feeling. And um, I think what Teller said hit the nail on the head. Like, he's a man that I don't understand. Um, he's confusing. I don't even know if he really understands what he believes. And I think that Killian Murphy did a fantastic job portraying that 
indecision and that guilt and those questions and not really knowing what the right thing was to do or say in certain moments. Um, he started off the film as more cocky and more overly confident, more egotistical. And then as it went on, a lot of that just started to fade away into horror at what he had caused. I also love that we did reveal what happened in the conversation with Einstein. I wasn't sure if that was going to be something that was revealed. I also wonder if that was a conversation that actually happened and what he actually said. I guess I could look it up. I mean, hold on. I just read a little article on some of the things in the film that were true and some of the things that might have been more so used for the storytelling of the film. And it seems like the relationship between Einstein and Oppenheimer was largely accurate. However, the scenes that we saw were not necessarily things that happened. So I still enjoyed that scene a lot. I think it really boils down the entire journey for Oppenheimer into a clear, concise point morally, which is this question that they feared that they would set off this chain reaction, that the atmosphere would burn and the whole world would be destroyed. But in reality, they still set off this chain reaction that no one had predicted, or maybe they did predict, but not until it got close to the bomb being released, which is this arms race and this lack of communication between countries and this fight to make the biggest atomic weapon, you know, just back and forth, um, using it as a war tactic and not um, as a means to permanently end war and have peace forever. Um, that was a naive perspective. So I did like that conversation coming into play, not even really being about <laughs> Strauss at all. I think the whole B plot with Strauss was really interesting because I do think there were times when I thought it was useful. You know, you kind of needed to learn a little bit about what happened with Strauss to fully understand everything that happened, the fallout that came for Oppenheimer, everything that happened with him in the gray board and all of the um, unfairness that he faced with his security restrictions. You needed Strauss's perspective to like understand the level of corruption behind all of that. But at the same time, I do feel like there were things that were confusing to me about that whole story. And I don't know if I necessarily liked the way it all wrapped up. I will also say I did like Robert Downey Jr.'s character being utilized as a narrative figure because I think with a biopic, sometimes it's really helpful to have narration, but a lot of times narration isn't really done well. A lot of times narrators will come in and out of films and you notice it and it's very jarring or maybe someone will narrate in the beginning and they won't narrate for a really, really long time and then they'll narrate towards the end. I hate when that happens because there's no through line for the narrator there. They're not really serving the story. It's just helping fix empty holes in a lazy storyteller or a lazy plot rather. In this movie, I think it really made a lot of sense. I actually liked him being utilized as a narrator because it never felt jarring. It felt like it fit into the story because it started off that way. Um, his whole perspective, essentially everything that he's done is because he's jealous of Oppenheimer and wanted to get revenge, wanted to get back at him. And so it makes sense that he would be talking about the things that happened with Oppenheimer also because he's being questioned about it at this hearing. So everything he's saying and telling the story about Oppenheimer and this narrative perspective um, makes sense. And it just felt really cohesive with the film. I will also say though, the way that that whole plot ended with everything being revealed, it just felt a little heavy handed because we essentially as an audience had that explained to us twice with watching it play out because that one character that worked for Strauss essentially served as an audience type figure because he was kind of asking all the same questions that I was asking in my head at the right times and figuring and piecing things together at the same time that we were as an audience. But because we had that, then to have Remy Malek's character come in and give his deposition and to have that be essentially the same thing repeated, it didn't really feel like, I don't know, I don't know how you would execute that, but it just felt extra. It felt like too much. It felt heavy handed with the exposition. I also feel like the acting in those moments started to get a little bit more heavy handed as well. I think because we were seeing a side of Strauss's exterior um, his confident exterior beginning to crack. Uh, I think everything started to just feel a little bit more like a gotcha moment and a little bit heavy handed with the acting um, from everybody, not just from Strauss, but from all of the characters around him. Everything just started to kind of feel a little bit gratuitous in a way. I don't know if 
I'm explaining the way I'm feeling about this in the right way, but I just think that B plot was kind of weak in general, and I don't know if we really needed it. Like, I kind of wish that there was a way we could have told Oppenheimer's story without that entire B plot. I also still don't understand why it was in black and white. I'm going to be totally honest. I don't get why it was in black and white. I was kind of waiting to figure that out. I wonder if I Google it, if like people were asking the same question as me. Hold on. Why was part of Oppenheimer in black and white? <laughs> Let's see. There's got to be a reason meant to depict the point of view of Robert Downey Jr. Right. I got that. His worldview is largely concrete and proper. No barrier between the world of film and the audience. Meant to depict his point of view. Being a formal naval officer and businessman, his worldview was largely concrete and proper. Okay, I do get that. That makes sense um, to a certain extent. I don't know if that really worked for me personally. I, I could understand how there are people who would totally get that and vibe with it. I think for me, all it made me do was think, oh, we're in black and white again. <laughs> I feel like when you make certain choices that are really extreme visually like that, I as an audience member will basically think like, am I noticing the choice that like a director or a cinematographer made from a filmmaking perspective? Or am I noticing it subtly, but then being moved by it emotionally? Because those are two different things. I think if I don't notice it so much and I'm, I'm more so just noticing the feeling it's evoking in me, then I think it was good and it was well done. If I'm only thinking from a technical perspective and only noticing technically what's happening in post or on set, then I don't necessarily love that as much because it actually takes me out of the story. Whereas if you're just evoking an emotion in me and I'm not so much noticing the technicality every time, um, I'm more immersed in the story. So with this, I unfortunately feel like the black and white just made me think we're in black and white again. Like I wasn't really thinking, oh, I'm in Strauss's head and he thinks so regimentedly and that's why this is black and white. Like it really just kind of made me notice the fact that this was a film being made, if that makes sense. But that's just how I feel. I'm sure there were a lot of people that loved it. For me, it just kind of felt like unnecessary, but I also feel like a lot of the B plot didn't feel super necessary to me, especially because I feel like this whole movie was like an exploration of Oppenheimer and his feelings and everything he's gone through. I, I understand from the perspective of like wanting to know everything that happened with him in the end in the gray board and wanting to understand how he was wronged, like it is helpful to know politically the motivations for that. But at the same time, like I feel like it just muddied the waters a bit because it, it just kept taking away from what was going on with Oppenheimer and I just wanted to get back to that. So I don't know, there were times where I liked what was happening in the B plot and I liked what it was doing, but I also, felt like it was heavy handed at times or confusing at times um, and maybe detracting from the story at other moments. I think there were, probably would have been a way you could have done it without really incorporating Strauss as such a, a intense character. Like you could have maybe still had him there and still insinuated that he was behind everything. But I don't know if I necessarily needed his whole hearing to be interviewed to be a part of the cabinet. I don't know if I really really cared about that, to be honest. But from, you know, an acting perspective, from a effects perspective, from the imagery that was explored in the movie, like that was just fantastically done. I really, really enjoyed like the whirring and vibrating that we would see in his mind too, when he would be going into a panic and hearing those stomping footsteps. I know I've brought up the water like a million times, but I really loved the ripple effect imagery that we saw. It just perfectly tied in the chain effect talk and the science talk of like what's happening in the bomb to what's happening in the world with the chain effect to also what's happening in mother nature and how beholden they were to mother nature at all times. Like all of the storm imagery in New Mexico and how they had to wait for the storm to calm down before they could even run the test. And, and even using mother nature so much in the film tied in really well to a lot of his talk about Prometheus and being a prophet and calling himself the bringer of death. You know, that infamous quote, um, I am the destroyer of worlds because it's like he's this idea and he's created this thing that's so much bigger than himself and he can't, once the cap is off, it's totally out of his hands and he's not um, able to control it anymore. 
it's so much bigger than him. I just feel like a lot of the imagery and things that were explored tied in really well with that. And I really enjoyed that a lot. The sound design as well, just incredible. The music was so beautiful. I loved the choice to have tragic violin, dramatic music over the sounds of soldiers cheering and people clapping for him and celebrating as he's got this horror and this intense feeling of guilt and sadness stirring inside of him. I really enjoyed that a lot. And it was interesting too, because I feel like, you know, whenever you're watching a movie that's historically accurate based off of real people, you don't necessarily get everything you want out of characters because they're based off of real human beings and real human beings are not as neat and empathetic necessarily as fictional characters. So a lot of the people in this movie were not necessarily likable. Like they had a lot of issues. They were very full of themselves, very egotistical, not great parents, like very unlikable. But um, I still felt compelled and enjoyed learning a lot about what happened with some of these figures. And from a biopic perspective, it was really well made. I just think there are some things that probably could have been cut out of the film, if I'm being totally honest. I don't think it was a perfect film, but I still enjoyed it. And I definitely look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about it in the comments down below. Take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I mean, this is just my initial thoughts and feelings after watching the movie one time. <laughs> And that's really all I have for you guys in this video. I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so that I know and I can watch more stuff like this in the future with all of y'all. Of course, let me know your thoughts and suggestions for other things you'd like me to watch next in the comments down below. Subscribe if you want to. And until the next one, stay golden. Bye.